Hello guys, SW Outdoors, and it's getting to that time of year, the moment we've all been waiting for. It is now getting close to November, which means one thing, gun season. Today's episode, we're going to review a bunch of whitetail hunting gear for your success this deer season. Y'all stay tuned. Anyways guys, it is getting to that time of year again, deer season, and this episode I'm going to be focusing on gear to budget on for deer hunting, because technically I've been hunting whitetail deer for technically five years, five years, and I've had success in the woods, I've shot a fair bit of deer over the years, and technically here in Ontario we have, like technically in certain areas, I know up north they have a two week rifle season and where I live there's only a one week gun season so um, it usually falls upon the first full week of November and then we have another firearm season which is the muzzleloader hunt which takes place in early December so we're getting on to the last first full week of November getting close to uh, gun season and I'm looking forward to getting out and doing some uh, hunting for white-tailed deer as I always do every year, because it's usually my favorite time of year that I look forward to all year, is uh, gun season. So, we're going to go through some gear for this deer season. So, in this episode, we're going to review all the equipment you need for a successful gun hunt. So, first step is we're going to look at guns, we're going to look at clothing, we're going to look at scent stuff, we're going to go through it all. So, either way, Enjoy this episode of SW Outdoors. First step is what I got here is I got a bunch of camouflage right here. So I got a cam light camouflage coat that I usually wear. It's what I usually wear even in public as well. Um, it's a real tree coat, but it's technically a company called Hunt Shield is what I usually wear. So. You find yourself a decent like coat like this um, even if you go to like a used thrift store or something like that that usually range to be a good price for them so this is what I use for a light coat um, if it's not too cold I usually wear that and then I also have another sweater for I usually wear early season so I got a strainer hoodie right here so this is a little bit of an extra layer of clothing and then I have a big camouflage coat like this so yeah I've had this coat for a long time even before I started hunting and I usually wear it in the bush during the fall usually during the hunting season another big thing that you need for gear is a good set of gloves these are light gloves, but I also have some heavier gloves that I'll wear, especially if the weather gets a little cooler cooler during uh, deer season two. So I got some gloves there, and most times I'll even carry a face mask on me here. I'll wear it on my face while I'm sitting in a blind or sitting on the ground, and it just goes over my head and it covers up my face. So that's also what I wear when I'm out deer hunting. Now, I got some uh, camouflage pants and some bibs here. So Usually, if it's not like totally cold or anything like that, I would usually wear these camouflage pants, like something light like this. And usually I'll wear it also while I'm out turkey hunting as well, or waterfowl hunting on like a field or anything like that. But yeah, so I wear some nice pair of pants, like the camouflage pants like this. This is not expensive pants. These were pants I've had for like years as well. And even if it's you bought used at a thrift store, it's also cheap to actually buy some decent camouflage pants like this. So, um, got some pants there, and then we also got a pair of bibs when it gets cold. Because sometimes in November it gets pretty chilly here in Ontario, and a nice pair of bibs can keep you nice and warm when you're on the, sitting in a deer stand, or sitting in a ground blind, or just sitting on the ground and you could actually keep yourself nice and warm and toasty with these on. And then another thing I have to carry all my gear 
in decent camouflage backpack. So I'll carry a backpack with me, carry all my gear, my licenses, my scent wop, my grunt tubes, or my rattling horns. So yeah, so have a nice decent backpack to carry all your gear. So, so by law here in Ontario, during the firearm season, you have to wear, for safety, Hunter Orange. So I got two things of Hunter Orange here. I got myself an orange vest. That's what I usually wear is an orange vest during uh, gun season. It's usually here in Ontario. So anything like a vest will be good. And you just wear it over your uh, camouflage clothing as well. So I usually wear a vest. And as well, I have myself, usually when it gets cooler, is a full-blown orange coat. So I usually wear the full-blown orange coat as well when I'm gun hunting. Usually during rifle season I wear a full orange coat. And then I have myself an orange cap, which is a real tree orange cap. So I usually wear this hat, usually. And, and you can pretty much get any type of orange hat for like a cheap price or any hunter orange coat or so on so on. And then if it gets colder, I'll usually wear a orange toque over my orange cap. So very important uh, during firearm season is to have hunter orange. It'll do a long way of saving your life and let no people that you're sitting in a stand nearby or so on so on but make sure to wear hunter orange during firearm season it'll do a long way of saving your life so either ways hunter orange very important and now we're going to get on to uh, some other stuff another thing is footwear uh, get yourself a decent pair of hunting boots, like these ones here. I've worn these boots for several deer seasons, and they actually never disappointed me. So I wear these types of boots here. These are waterproof boots as well. And I also would wear rubber boots as well while deer hunting. So a good pair of boots will go you a long way. And another thing that I usually use is um, scent stuff and also grunt calls and rattling horns. So usually, I usually wear this when I'm out bow hunting usually. Um, this is uh, some downwind spray, which would act, which covers your scent. I usually would spray it on my hunting clothes when I'm going out to a stand and try to cover up my scent a little bit. But usually, this is just something I usually wear on me, is some scent cover. And another thing I usually use for attractant for deer are scent wall. And I would usually set up scent wops in a tree close to my hunting spot and put out some deer scent. Like this is just um, a bottle of buck blom, which usually at the store I bought some today as well. It cost me like 20 bucks. Um, this is doe and estrus. So I usually would use, I, I'm big into using scent stuffs. And there are times I use the scent pucks. I usually hang up in the tree close to my hunting spots as well, but usually I would put this up on a tree while heading into my blind. So it would give a little scent to my little area. So greatly important. Another thing that I like to use as well is a grunt tube. And I do try to grunt and call for deer. Never called in a deer before, but usually some people do this and it works like this. Just like a Kind of like a duck call, just put it in your mouth like this and just do a little. <coughs> yeah, so I sometimes like to call deer sometimes. And another thing is a rattle bag. Rattle bag like this. I mean, this is an optional thing, but I usually like to try to rattle and grunt call for deer. If it's a quiet morning and that during the rut, I would probably use this sometimes. But uh, technically, there's some other stuff there. We got some scent stuff and a rattle bag and a grunt tube. And then there's another thing I use is also a doe bleat where I just flip it around and 
put it up and put it up and put it out. So I don't really use the bleed as much anymore. I usually just also use the grunt tube and the rattling bag. But most of the time I just sit around and just wait and see if anything comes out. And now I got some other stuff right here. Um, I got some rope in case of if I shoot a deer on the ground and after gutting the deer and everything like that, I use the rope to try to drag a deer out of the bush. So we'll wrap the rope around the deer's neck or around part of the body and drag it out out of the bush. And then depending on if we're using a quad runner or perhaps if we don't have a quad runner, we have to drag the deer all the way to the truck. This is where rope comes in handy. So I always have some extra rope on me. Some I know this is good rope right here so I haven't opened this rope yet but it comes handy when you're getting into remote spots and you shoot a deer on the ground is always have rope handy so another thing is a pair of decent binoculars so I got these for Christmas last year and like I said the biggest thing for me is when you're sitting in a deer blind or a deer stand and you're sitting there and you see something that you don't intend to shoot. Well, you're not going to aim your gun and basically for unsafe matters, you're aiming a gun. It perhaps could be a person, your hunting buddy or whatever. So that's not really a safe alternative. If you want to spot something that you're unsure of what you're shooting and you can see for long distances, I recommend carrying a decent pair of binoculars. And if you see something that you don't intend to shoot and you're looking in your deer blind, that's where binoculars come handy. So you actually spot out your target before you decide to carry your rifle and look through your rifle scope at something you want to shoot at. So I usually recommend, I'd rather prefer anybody who's hunting with me, if you're looking at something you don't intend to shoot and you want to look at a fair distance, bring a pair of binoculars instead of using your gun and spotting out your target. Like spotting at something that you don't intend to shoot, like your hunting buddy or hunting partner or whatever. So get yourself a decent pair of binoculars and do and you be able to look around and spot out your target. Big thing also as well is to have a decent buck knife. This is a knife that I've had for a while, technically with my brothers. Um, a knife like this is good. But my recommendations when field dressing a deer, I usually would like to go with something a little bit smaller. Like a small little pocket knife, like this. Make sure it's well sharpened, you could get in and field dress a deer very easier. Like it easy to get to the small places. But I also have a decent knife like this, also too. I've gutted a few deer with this knife here. This is a browning knife. But it also has, I don't know, it doesn't have it anymore is a flint and steel on the thing so I can make a fire in the bush when that comes handy so have my knives here got some rope got some binoculars so that's what I got for most part of my year here so okay guys we're now getting to the best part of the video now we're going to get on to firearms so I'm going to let out the, bring out some firearms and show you what guns are the best for deer hunting. Well guys, since we're talking about gun hunting in particular, um, we got an assortment of firearms on the table right here. So commonly used by deer hunters are three different firearms. So first off, we're going to start with everybody's favorite. It's a high powered rifle. And this is my rifle here. This is a 243 Tika. And I've shot a fair bit of deer with this gun. So, um, this gun, I've shot my first deer with it. I've shot a couple other deer with it. And um, my first ever whitetail buck, which I got mounted in the background on the, uh, on the left side is my buck. And then the other side was a buddy's buck. So, um, this is a commonly used by deer hunters is a rifle. And if you're going to choose a rifle... For deer hunting, uh, there are many calibers in particular. Um, one, um, everybody likes using the uh, 30 odd six. Um, so, 
you know, we got three odd six, the 308. Um, another one would be popular was also the 300, 300 Win Mag. And everybody likes also like the six, using the 6.5 Creamor. And I, I, I have no hate for anyone that likes to use the 6.5 Creamor. I know a lot of people use the 6.5 Creamor. But particularly my favorite cartridge to use is the 243, which is the gun I'm holding in my hand right here. So the best caliber, I'll list a bunch of calibers right here on the screen. So, um, so best weapon for many hunters is a high-powered rifle. And that's what I use technically during firearm season, particularly bolt action rifles like this. But then the other option for rifles you got, if I can split on the screen here, quickly above the screen, what I likes is a lever action like this rifle right here. This is a disabled 32 Special, which was my grandfather's gun, and he shot a fair bit of deer with it. Um, lever action guns like this are simply used like right there you just open up the action like that pull it back like that and shoot like that so technically some cartridges like lever action guns like this especially like 30 30s um uh 45 70 it's a good cartridge out here and today i was actually talking to somebody at a gun store who actually had a lever action 300 so lever guns are also pretty common in deer hunting as well if you find yourself a good lever gun, it will be worth your while. But technically, the best lever gun I know on the market is the 3030. And over the years, there has been a lot of game, especially a lot of deer. The 3030 is actually a good cartridge for hunting white-tailed deer. And I know a lot of people that have killed a lot of deer with 3030s. So, 3030 and other lever guns are also a good choice for deer hunting there's a lot of guys that also use a lot of semi-automatic rifles as well so that's good the rifle is actually good so the rifle is the most common tool used during firearm seasons here in Ontario but as well later in the season we also have is a muzzleloader so this is a modern muzzleloader this is my Thompson Center Encore um, I've shot only one deer with this gun and big doe, a decent doe that I shot last year, and I got it on film, you guys can see the video in that. But um, love, I, I personally love muzzleloader hunting. I like the tradition, I love the history of muzzleloader hunting, so a lot of guys will use a modern day muzzleloader like this. So technically you just breach it open like that and you put a percussion cap in it, and you just take your ram rod like this, ram a powder charge and a little small bullet down the barrel. So technically you can go a whole week of muzzleloader hunting and the only the only reason this gun would be considered loaded is if you have a percussion cap in it. So if you don't have a percussion cap in it, the gun is not considered loaded. The gun is only considered loaded if you have a percussion cap in it. So most deer hunters will also use a muzzleloader like this. And it could be any brand from, like this is a Thompson Center. There's a lot of guys that'll use Traditions and a lot of guys that'll use also the CVA Wolfs and whatever other muzzleloader company. There's also guys that'll probably go old school and use old cap lock muzzleloaders. And there's a lot of guys that'll probably use the old flintlock. I know a lot of guys that also use flintlock too. So another good choice for a deer hunting gun is a muzzleloader. So that's another common gun for deer hunters, but in some areas, especially in deer hunting, um, particularly some parts of, especially here in Ontario too, um, there are some areas that will not allow you to even use high powered rifles like this, higher populated areas. So there are some areas where you are not allowed to use rifles for big game hunting. So another thing in particular that most people will actually use for gun hunting, and especially in some areas where you can't use like, 243s or or 3030s or 30 odd six guns the option is for only a shotgun because some areas here in Ontario you're only allowed to use shotgun only seasons and particularly a shotgun like this um, is a good tool to use for deer hunting so this is 
my bird shotgun that I use for waterfowl hunting. It's pump action. There's some guys that will probably use semi-automatic as well. Um, but you load them with rifled slugs. And rifled slugs are the most common tool to use for hunting white-tailed deer. Some guys will use buckshot as well. So particularly a slug gun or a regular shotgun is ideal in some areas for deer hunting. Um, I was considering using the 12 gauge for deer hunting this year, but I just decided to go with my rifle because in my area where I live, I can use rifles. But most guys in some areas will actually prefer, or by law, you're only allowed to use shotguns for deer hunting. So another common tool for deer hunting is a shotgun, or most people will call them also slug guns. So there you have it guys. There's all your firearms right there. Got everything from rifles to muzzle loader, as well as a shotgun. So these are all the three tools that most people use for deer hunting for firearms. So most of these brands here, like I have a Tika right here and a Thompson Center, and those are very high end guns. So technically if you want to buy a good rifle or shotgun or muzzle loader or whatever you're buying, um, I'll go for cheaper brands. Um, usually this Maverick here, if you're going shotgun hunting, this gun retails under, under $500. So this gun is actually quite cheap. Also, if you want to go get a good brand of a rifle, Savage or other companies like Mossberg and that, they have cheap guns as well. Um, the CVA Wolf for muzzle loaders are quite cheap as well, so you can you can budget on your firearms a little bit. I got these guns used, so I got a good deal on the Tika and the Black Powder. And yeah, so there's all these used guns you could actually use for hunting whitetail deer. So you don't have to break the bank for a good deer hunting gun. So either ways, that's pretty much how we got for the firearms here. So. Anyways guys, that's my video for today. Um, we laid out all the gear. We've seen camouflage, blazed orange, some scent stuff, knives, guns, everything else that you'll need for a successful whitetail hunt this year. So anyways guys, look, I'm looking forward to gun season this year. Hopefully we have some success during firearm season. So either ways, if you guys like this video, make sure you guys put a like. If you guys are not subscribed to SW Outdoors, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, my videos are, and good luck this season. SW Outdoors, sign out.